Hello, it is Tuesday, February 8th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is, of course, a Tuesday puzzle, so another hopefully fairly gentle puzzle after yesterday's to continue easing us into the week. And um, f- I would like to thank a few people for helping ease us into a week. Thank you to uh, Austi Pelisser, Laura Sexton, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster for bringing us this edition of The Daily Solve. They are benefactors of The Daily Solve Patreon campaign. So thank you to the three of them and to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. If you'd like to join their ranks as benefactors, you can do so to get that Let's Check the Crosses mug and uh, this recognition at patreon.com slash daily solve. Or you can back the Patreon campaign at any level and get access to the full array, the whole panoply of bonus video solves up on the Patreon channel, as well as the extra extra channel in the Daily Solve Discord chat server. And even if you're not a Patreon backer, um, it's worth checking out the Daily Solve Discord chat server. It's a nice it's a nice little community um, discussing crosswords, other puzzles, and uh, Wordle scores. <laughs> Who isn't these days? Okay. Uh, and do remain to the end of the video if you'd like to see a couple of comments from yesterday's video. Um, only a couple, which befits the smaller Wednesday puzzle, or sorry, Monday puzzle, I should say. Okay. Well, not smaller. Smaller than the Sunday, which had quite a few comments. Anyway, let's solve today's puzzle. Of course, this is a Tuesday puzzle. It was constructed by, it was co-constructed by three constructors, uh, Jack, Joshi, Jackson, Janes, and Adam Aronson. And I've just noticed that I, I suppose this is entirely coincidence, but they all have um, uh, sort of alliterative uh, names. They all have double repeating letter initials, uh, JJ, JJ, and AA. And AA, Adam Aronson, we've solved a few of his crosswords before. He's done, I don't know, maybe a dozen or so. And uh, Jack Joshi and Jackson Janes, both first-time constructors, debut puzzle for each of them. And I believe they're friends of Adam Aronson. I looked this up before the crossword, but it didn't occur to me at the time that the initials had that repetition. And that's especially funny given that Adam Adam Aronson has constructed a puzzle themed around uh, this pairing of A and A. Anyway, let's see what they've gotten up to today. There's some kind of theme because it is a Tuesday puzzle. We're still in the themed part of the week. So let's see what they've, what they've constructed. I'm ready to get started. Okay. River crossing platforms in Frogger. So this is the um, classic arcade video game Frogger. Uh, you can cross logs in Frogger as you attempt to get the, uh, the frog over a busy motorway and a uh, river. Memes with captions like "I can has cheeseburger." Is that a, is there a category of that? <laughs> I remember "I can has cheeseburger." That was a cat. It's a cat, I think with a picture of a cheeseburger. I don't remember if there's a cheeseburger in the picture, but I do remember that, I don't know, format. What is the name of that? I have no idea. If I, hmm, maybe maybe, it'll, maybe I'll really recognize it when I see it. Extra sports period could be overtime. Big retailer of Nintendo and Xbox products. Um, there's a video game retailer called GameStop. So it's probably that. It may be slippery. I don't know, slime maybe, starting with an S and five letters. Let's look here. Right. Oh, egg-shaped is oval, so that does look likely, doesn't it, slime? And then here we have, oh, presumably this is part of the theme, tart snacks, and then in brackets, pressure. What does that mean, tart snacks? Maybe I should remove slime because this is going to be important to get right, and I don't want to put myself on the wrong track. I mean, tart snacks, lemon drops, but, or lemon dry, that's not even plural. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't know what that would mean with respect to pressure anyway. Let's let's look at some more crosses on this, some of these downs. Thin pancakes. Oh, arepas, that was in the puzzle recently. That's funny. Uh, cruising, say, could be, I was going to say at sea. Yeah, it probably is at sea. You could say you're on a crew, right. That meaning of cruise, of course, you're on a cruise ship, you're cruising. Okay, fair enough. And I don't know, it's not a ripas, it's um, crepes. Sorry, I had that in mind because of the other day, the corn, corn-based patties, not really thin pancakes. So that's not really a- accurate. Oh, the, I see. The memes with captions like I can't have cheeseburger are lolcats. Wow, I have not heard that phrase in many years. It's a, 
uh, but I do remember it now that I now that I have sufficient crosses. Okay, maybe slippery could be a slope as used in the often often fallacious slippery slope argument. And tarts next does look like lemon something, doesn't it? And then nifty could be neat. And white lies. White lies often often say fibs, white lies, small untruths. World soccer organization is FIFA. That I do know. The uh, something international football association, maybe federated perhaps. Uh, lines at a wedding. I do's. Right. So a line at a wedding is I do. So lines, I do's. And tart snacks. Lemon bars. Right. Okay. Lemon bars are tart snacks. Now, why is that pressure? A bar is a unit of pressure. Is that what that means? And well, I mean, a bar is a unit of pressure, but I mean, is that the theme? There's probably more to it than that. But I'm not sure what yet. I don't know. I'll have to keep going. Seriously, it could be for real. And a baseball datum could be an assist. Um, a single unit of data in a basketball statistic. An assist. And if one manipulates as an election, one rigs that election. A kiss for a senor or a senorita would be uh, beso. Is that kiss in Spanish, I think? I think it is. Sorry, I'm never, I'm never highly confident about my Spanish, so I'll have to uh, check the crosses there. German luxury cars. Well, that looks correct, BMWs. And movie scale with a certified fresh tier brackets length. So the um, tomato or tomatometer, maybe it's pronounced. Is that what this is? The um, It's the Rotten Tomatoes website, the website that collates um, film reviews and translates them into essentially a yes, no, a, a uh, fresh or rotten score. And I think that the percentage aggregation that they do of that, I think is called the tomatometer or tomato meter. Is that what they mean by movie scale? Do they mean the do they mean that? Oh yeah, they probably do. Sorry, I didn't even think about the length bit. So a length, a meter is a unit of length. All right. So we've got bars are a unit of pressure. Meter is a unit of length. So what is is that the whole thing? Maybe it is. I can't quite tell. You never know on a on an early week day. It could be something, there could be something more complex going on. Or often on a Monday or Tuesday, it's just that. That's all it is. You just sort of another little thing is is part of the clue. All right. Bird in Duolingo's logo. Well, obviously it is an owl. That looks pretty self-evident, even if you aren't familiar with the logo of Duolingo, which is a uh, language learning app. And this is going to be good. Is ooh la la maybe? Don't know. That fits with the O's. Let's check the crosses. Yeah, I think so. Long stretches are epochs. Um, not an eon, maybe not not as not suggestive, not suggesting that not long, but a long stretch of time, a long era, an epoch. I don't know. Maybe an epoch could be considered. Maybe you could substitute eon. I always think of an eon as being even longer, even though I know that neither of these have any kind of definition. They're certainly not units of measurement in any strict sense, like a bar or a meter. Okay, atmospheric condition that can be caused by wildfires must be smog. And to achieve great things is to go big, I assume. Let's check the crosses, though. Super duper. Oh, maybe not. Super duper. Bill. Yeah, I don't think that's B. Certain recyclable could be a can. Okay, super duper. Maybe this isn't ooh la la. Is this ooh baby, maybe? It's funny. That, I don't know why I was confident about ooh la la, because when you think about it, it probably could be a whole whole raft of things. I mean, it could be even ooh, nice or something. I mean, it doesn't sound very plausible, but it could be. It could be almost anything. Um, but anyway, the reason I think maybe it's ooh, baby is because super duper could very well be fab, fabulous, fab. Um, slightly dated slang, but... Um, and I guess super duper is a little bit quaint, so maybe that fits. Okay, to achieve great things is to go far. There we go. That's a, that's actually a much better fill than go, go big anyway. Go far. To achieve great things, you'll go far. And Scrabble relative played without a board. Oh, banana 
grams because grams is a unit of mass. And uh, I didn't read that, but but uh, Scrabble relative played without a board, brackets, mass. So we want to end this clue. The second word in the clue will be uh, a unit of mass, one of which is grams. And bananagrams is, I have played that a couple of times. It's a, um, you've got a little <laughs> banana-shaped pouch of uh, Scrabble tiles, essentially. And I don't remember exactly how it works, to be honest with you, but there's so it is something about spelling words. Okay, undeserved criticism informally. Could be bad rap. You got a bad rap. It's not, it wasn't a fair, wasn't a fair uh, marring of your reputation. Love for a senor or, or a senorita. Oh, that's, that's a fun little echo because we had, where was that? We had um, kiss for a senor or senorita. And here we have love for a senor or senorita. And these things obviously go to, together, both in the sense of being love related concepts and also being Spanish words. So anyway, a more. And the Pentagon houses it, abbreviation, must be the Department of Defense, the DOD, in uh, the United States government. And I refuse your offer, no dice. A tiny shapeshifter, I guess is an amoeba, and I think by shapeshifter in this case doesn't necessarily mean it transmogrifies into another form entirely, but rather that it has a, um, it's, uh, it's sort of amorphous, so an amoeba. Single-celled organism, right? And actress, oh, I guess no dice is incorrect. No deal, not no dice. Okay, yeah, and that is a, also more straightforward. I freeze your offer, no deal. I wonder why I didn't think of that. I wonder why I thought of no dice rather than no deal. I don't know, go figure. It's, uh, <laughs> sometimes, I, sometimes I think about my brain as being sort of a pachinko machine and the little, you know, the little ball is falling down in basically a completely arbitrary way and uh, just sort of comes out wherever it's going to come out. Anyway, actress Witherspoon, Reese Witherspoon, and people have counted on them for centuries. Plural of abacus, uh, abacai or abacai, depending on, I suppose, which uh, approach to this Latin C you're taking. And uh, so anyway, counting counting devices, you know. Actually, I had an abacus as a as a child, little, little you know, the little beads that you, you count on the, on the, the various columns. Anyway, comp blank, comp uh, sci, comparative sciences, I would think. And Michael of Monty Python is Michael Palin, a uh, great, great comedian. And a hand, I shouldn't say A, I do that sometimes on the puzzle, on, on the video, I don't know why, I sort of insert an article before the clue to sort of make it I don't know. I think because my brain thinks that's helpful in some way, but sometimes it's inaccurate because sometimes it's a verb or something and it shouldn't be, shouldn't have an article in front. Anyway, hand holding at equestrian school, uh, rain, you might hold the reins, equestrian horse, horse riding and related, related activities and sports. Uh, so hand holding the rain and Reynolds of Deadpool, the actor, Ryan Reynolds, um, I know is in those films and Transplants could be grafts. You could have a skin graft, for instance, a skin transplant. A spoiled kid is a brat. And skull-related could be cranial, related to your skull, your cranium, cranial, the adjective for that. And blank town, windy city, chai town, Chicago, the windy city, Chicago known as the windy city and also as uh, chai town. I hope I'm saying that correctly. It just occurred to me, maybe I'm not. I've actually never been to Chicago kind of interested in, in doing so. It's great. So it seems to have some great architecture there. Anyway, cool in the 90s could be fat, slightly dated slang, I suppose, at this point. So hence in the 90s and fat with a PH. What a three-point shooter needs. Good aim. Uh, so you, three points in basketball is the, the long shot and you'd need good aim to, to, make, to hit that. Uh, one of three in Fiji, question mark. So I think this is the first clue I've seen so far in this puzzle with the question mark, the pun indicator, pun or wordplay. So there's something about this that won't be, oh, dots, Fiji the word has three dots. So obviously the surface meaning, the surface reading of one of three in Fiji suggests, I don't know, three natu natural features or three 
branches of government or something. I mean, so, something that has to do with some phys- phys- thing that exists conceptually in Fiji, the actual location. But what we want instead is to treat Fiji as a word, not a location. And we have uh, three dots in Fiji because it is a, has that question mark indicator there. All right. Sun follower would be mun. Sunday, Monday. And uh, the clue is abbreviated, therefore, so will be the answer. Freaks out could be panics. And question after a poorly delivered joke. Get it. Yes. Usually only need to ask that in the case of poor delivery. Or I suppose the delivery could be good. The acceptance is poor. I don't know. I suppose that's just as just as possible. Window customization at an auto shop. You could tint your windows at an auto shop. And a, an herb that tastes soapy to some. Cilantro or coriander here in the UK. Coriander leaves. Um... I like, I really like cilantro and I'm, I've always, I've always felt, um, sympathetic to those who have the gene that gives it a soapy taste. It's unfortunate. Okay. Uh, Vientian local would be Lao, one of Laos. And to get going. No, sorry. See, I'm doing it again. I'm doing that thing. I'm putting in this case, the two for the infinite, for the in, verb infinitive in front of the thing. I shouldn't be doing that. It's not to get going. It's not a verb. It's get going. It's a directive. Uh, snap to it, maybe, with that S-N-A. If I didn't have tint and lao, I might have assumed step on it or something like that, but sla- snap to it seems plausible to me. And brand of pizza rolls. Um, I don't know. Tostito? They That's a brand of chips, maybe? Do they do pizza rolls? I'm not sure. I'll have to check the crosses. Not appropriate could be inapt. Uh, inapt, not appropriate, not apt. A title for a king could be sire. And some members of the family salamandridae. Uh, so presumably the family that includes salamanders. Is it, uh, it would be newts, I would assume. They seem quite related. Although this looks sort of strange. Maybe it's not newts. What about this? Playful response to you're a funny one. Aren't I, one might say, I suppose. And here we have longtime Nabisco cookie and force. So we have a unit of force that's going to end this. Unit of force. Oh, Newton. A Newton is a unit of force. Oh, and Fig Fig Newton, of course. Longtime Nabisco cookie. Um, That's 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 pretty funny. That's good Uh, because presumably they're both. I think they're both named after. Isaac Newton, which I don't think is true of any of the the rest of these, which are, um, you know, it's sort of arbitrary that these concepts overlap. But I think, I think the Fig Newton is named after Isaac Newton. I'm not 100% positive about that, but I think so. Anyway, college app stat could be a GPA or grade point average. And a sticky strip could be tape, adhesive tape, sellotape. Uh, again, sellotape here in the UK. And once again is a new doing it again. And a side dish whose name comes from the Dutch for salad is slaw. And the constructors of this puzzle, e.g., are a trio. That's nice. A little nod to our constructors, uh, JJJJ and AA. Heavy drinkers are sots. And so let's check the crosses. Oh, so this was indeed newts, right? It just looked odd to me because of the the proximity of the W to the E and the T, but but it all worked out. And then, um, well, we already had these. Oh, and then brand of pizza roll Totino's. Okay, sure. Uh, seems plausible enough, I suppose. And Purim heroin. Oh, this is a Jewish holiday based on a story in the Torah, but I don't remember. And longest non-Russian river in Europe. Must be the Danube. And a jeer is a jibe. And like, obviously, duh. So here we have another case where the clue is a bit of slang and it matches the answer in tone, I would say. So you could imagine someone, it probably in the 90s, much like someone who might say fat for cool in the 90s, saying like, obviously, duh. Uh, slightly outdated at this point, but um, but I guess it's probably still used to some extent. Anyway, treated a sprained ankle, say, could be 
iced it, maybe that it is sort of funny, but I think that's probably the case. We, you iced it, you treated a sprained angle, uh, ankles. Let's let's check the crosses. Follow with by. Glide by, maybe. Uh, it follows. Uh, I'm not sure. He sold his namesake company to Disney for over four billion dollars. George Lucas sold Lucas Film, his namesake company, to Disney for over four billion dollars. That was sort of one of the. Certainly not the beginning, because the Marvel acquisition had already occurred by that point. But um, that was one of those one of the big moves that really solidified our current era of media consolidation, I suppose. Anyway, professional negotiator is an agent who works on your behalf, usually for a cut of um, your future earnings. And sigh in brackets is alas, and the brackets mean uh, this is a sort of nonverbal. It's an it's a it's vocal. But but not um, not sort of written language. Ah, ah, alas, I mean, I guess I guess alas is written language, but sigh is more of a, a a vocalization that isn't so much verbal. Anyway, follow by by. Oh, abide by. Right. So follow instructions. I was thinking I was using the wrong sense of follow. I was thinking follow after somebody, for instance. Um, no, you always have to be careful about that. Oh, and Esther is the Purim heroine. Okay, great. And issue for a programmer is a bug. A programmer might uh, debug software. So anyway, let's finish this off. And there's the puzzle. Uh, 1847. That was a was that a longer solve than you? I I don't remember how long it takes me to solve puzzles anymore because before the series, I would do them obviously. Um, I would obviously go through them more quickly because I wouldn't be talking through them. So I don't even know how long it takes me to do a puzzle anymore. This feels like longer than I would usually spend on a Tuesday, but I don't know. It didn't feel particularly difficult for a Tuesday. I don't know. Let me know how you how you fared with that. And as it turns out, the theme was, after all, fairly straightforward. We just, we had compound answers. We had uh, compound nouns. I think they were all nouns. They were indeed. So all um, two word answers, the second of which word is a unit of measurement for whatever whatever concept was uh, was indicated in the clue. So here we had lemon bars containing bars, a unit of pressure. The tomatometer, as it may be pronounced, containing the meter, a unit of length, with the, uh, the American spelling of meter there, E-R at the end. We have uh, banana grams containing grams, a unit of mass. And finally, fig newton containing newton, a unit of force. So just a nice, another nice, this is very similar to yesterday's puzzle. In fact, it's almost really identical, um, except that we have a bit more cluing for it. Whereas yesterday we had a revealer that tied together the whole concept of the puzzle. Today we have the um, hidden word essentially clued in the clue itself. Um, but otherwise very similar to yesterday. One of those, another theme in that category that doesn't, doesn't really prevent you from solving the crossword if you haven't figured it out. It's just there. It's just hanging around in the crossword as a bit of extra, extra little theming. And appropriately enough for a Tuesday, it doesn't really get in the way and the, neither does the puzzle itself. It's a fairly smooth solve. So I hope you had, I hope you had a similar experience. Let me know if you did or didn't for that matter. Um, I do read all the comments, even the ones I don't read. Well, <laughs> That didn't make any sense. I read all the comments, even the ones I don't read. What I meant by that was I read all the comments, even the ones that I don't share on the program. Okay. But speaking of, uh, speaking of clues that I share on the program, I'm going to do just that now with a couple of clues from yesterday's puzzle. And uh, Kathy Swope, exp oh no, sorry. I am going to spoil the uh, the crossword, as has been requested for those who choose to skip to uh, skip to the um, this section of the video, and who may not have solved today's puzzle yet. So let's read some comments from yesterday's puzzle. Uh, Kathy Swope uh, gets in touch about the word Elon, which I understood to be panache or style uh, that that sort of that sort of meaning, and so I wasn't quite sure what. Uh, how it matched with exuberance, but I thought, well, this sort of seemed appropriate for exuberance, but it isn't quite the sense that I understood. Kathy Swope explains, there are two dictionary definitions of Elon, energy, style, and enthusiasm, which is what I sort of knew, and vigorous spirit or enthusiasm. So sort of slightly different spin on, on the concept of enthusiasm. 
uh, while exuberance is the quality of being full of energy, excitement, and cheerfulness, ebullience. So Elon can indeed be a synonym for exuberance. So there we have it. Shows what I know. Uh, and Remy also points something else out that I missed. Uh, Remy says, almost, the Wes Anderson movie is the French Dispatch, not the Paris Dispatch, as I misstated yesterday. Indeed. And in fact, the film isn't even set in Paris. So why did I... I mean, I've seen the film. I know it's not set in Paris, and I call it the Paris Dispatch. I don't know why anyone listens to me at all. Uh, you probably shouldn't. But you have. It's too late now. You've you've watched this whole video, or you've skipped straight to this and have been not spoiled by the video, I suppose. That's the other possibility. Uh, anyway, one way or another, you're here with me at the end of the video. So thank you for watching however much of this video you've watched. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do subscribe to the channel. I would uh, I'd very much appreciate that. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel, um, you know, do whatever the things you're supposed to do on YouTube to make the YouTube robot uh, like my channel, I guess. Boy, that sounds sad when I say it that way. Anyway, uh, thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign. I very much appreciate it. Oh, and also if you are a Patreon, uh, if you are a Patreon subscriber, or actually I suppose for that matter, if you're not a Patreon subscriber, but you're considering becoming one and you have a particular request you'd like me to solve, uh, as a bonus video for Patreon subscribers, let me know as well. You can uh, let me know here in the comments or on uh, Patreon comments if you are already a subscriber or on Twitter or anywhere else. And actually, you can find me on Twitter at The Daily Solve. So there we go. I've gotten all of the plugs in today. And with that, I'll be back tomorrow for the Wednesday puzzle, another uh, themed puzzle, stepping up the difficulty just a bit as we as we move uh, into the, the midweek period. And I hope you'll join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Uh -huh.